Yummo and Aobai are having a martial arts contest. Aobai releases a fierce fire to burn Yummo. Zaylin wants to rescue Yummo, but Aobai stops her, saying, You can't save him. He's just a little black fish. He'll be burned to death soon. Yummo saves himself. Seeing this, Zaylin thinks to herself, This is the light of the Nine Fins baptism by fire. He is a descendant of the Nine Fins. Marshal Huad rushes over and reprimands them, saying, What's going on in the middle of the night? Yummo extinguishes the fire on his body and joins everyone in saluting Marshal Huad. Zaylin runs over with concern and asks Yummo how he is. Yummo replies, I'm fine, just a little hot. Aobai skeptically says to Yummo, If you were just an ordinary little black fish, how could you possibly survive under the dragon's flame? Marshal, there must be something wrong with his identity. Yandan says, Marshal, it was I who gave Yummo the Snowlingzi, so his immortal power could resist the dragon's flame. Huat asks her, Where did you get the Snowlingzi? She replies, My sister Zixi saved Emperor Ying Yuan, and in gratitude, the Emperor bestowed Snowlingzi upon her. She gave it to me, and I gave it to Yummo. Huat says, It's late at night. If you're not serving in the Yangsu Heavenly Palace, what are you doing here? Hurry back. Yandan takes her leave. Huat orders, Yummo, Aobai, starting from today, you two are confined to your quarters. You are not allowed to step out of the door without my permission. Zixi requests Ying Yuan to transfer Yandan back to Suangzin Cliff. Ying Yuan asks, Is this what Yandan wants? Zixi replies, Last night. There was a great fire at Suangzin Cliff. Yandan gave the extremely precious Snow Lingzi to save her little black fish. Considering this, she must be willing to go back. Ying Yuan asks her, Do you have any personal requests that you would like to make of me? She replies, I would like to request that the Emperor teaches me the celestial technique of aerial spinning. I wonder if the Emperor would be willing. Ying Yuan plays the zither and the celestial technique of aerial spinning is contained within the melody. He says to her, these are the essentials. Have you memorized them? She replies, yes, I have. He looks at her tentatively and says, back then, at Dick Cliff, I taught you the dust repelling technique you still remember. Zixi responds, I have never forgotten the techniques you taught me, your majesty. Ying Yuan curses her inwardly, lies upon lies, without any repentance. Because he had never taught Yandan any celestial techniques at the Dick Cliff. Ying Yuan thinks to himself, dealing with Zixi is easy, but how can I handle this situation without hurting Yandan's feelings? Yandan sees Zixi demonstrating the dust repelling technique in front of Ying Yuan. In her heart, she thinks, he teaches Zixi celestial techniques, so the one he truly favors must be Zixi. Upon seeing him assisting Zixi, she turns away and leaves. Yandan gazes at the two bottles containing stardust with great pain. One was a gift from Zixi, and the other she had prepared for Zixi but was rejected. She places both bottles of stardust into the cabinet. Yandan arrives at the thatched hut on Dick Cliff. Xiao Mendi flies onto her finger. She stands in the room for a while, surveying her surroundings. She sees the incense burner carved by Ying Yuan for her. She picks it up and remembers the moment when Ying Yuan kissed her through the screen in her dream. Holding back her tears, she pours out the ashes from the incense burner. Then, she slowly walks out of the hut with the incense burner in her hand. Yandan arrives at the crematorium and hands the incense burner to the attendant responsible for cremation, saying, Please help me destroy this. The attendant replies, Of course. Ching Yuan reports to the emperor, saying, I have confirmed that Ying Yuan did indeed leave Zixi in Yangsu Heavenly Palace. The rumors are quite accurate. Not only does Ying Yuan take great care of her, but he also teaches her to play the zither and practice celestial techniques. Furthermore, the emperor bestowed the Snow Lingzi upon Zixi, and she gave it to her sister Yandan. The emperor arrives at Yangsu Heavenly Palace and summons Zixi. He says to her, You risked your life to save Emperor Ying Yuan. Your merits should not go unrecognized. Zixi replies, it is the duty of a humble immortal. The emperor says, as the deputy head of Maofa Pavilion, when did healing and saving lives become part of your duties? Lately, 
there have been rumors circulating in the heavenly court, suggesting a hidden affection between you and Emperor Ying Yuan. Zixi replies, Emperor Ying Yuan's safety is synonymous with the safety of the Three Realms. I saved him for the sake of all beings in the Three Realms. There is not a trace of selfishness in my actions, nor do I dare to covet anything from Emperor Ying Yuan. The Emperor takes out a severed love thread and says to Ying Yuan and Zixi, I will bind you two with this red thread. If the thread breaks, there is no love, if it remains unbroken, there is love. The Emperor binds them with the red thread, and it breaks. The Emperor says, Good, as expected, Emperor Ying Yuan never disappoints me. Zixi, you have shown integrity and righteousness. I can bestow upon you a grace. What do you desire? Zixi replies, Saving Emperor Ying Yuan was for the sake of all beings in the Three Realms. Zixi does not seek grace. The Emperor says, I remember you have a sister. She pleaded for grace for you at the Yaokai Feast. I grant that your sister does not need to undergo trials in the mortal realm for your sake. Instead, she may attend the ceremony of ascending to the celestial realm. This is to fulfill the deep bond between you sisters. How does that sound? Zixi bows and says, Thank you for your grace, Emperor. Ying Yuan gazes at the red thread on the ground and thinks to himself, Yandan, I am well aware that you are the occupant of the thatched hut. But the laws of heaven dictate. What should I do? Ying Yuan visits the celestial attendants gathering celestial dew. Ying Deng approaches him and says, Emperor, may I accompany you while you enjoy the flowers? He replies, There's no need. She continues, Over these years, I believe you've noticed my feelings for you. Why won't you even grant me the opportunity to enjoy the flowers with you? Ying Yuan says to her, Don't think I am unaware of your intentions. Before cultivating the spirit, one must cultivate the heart. If your intentions are not pure, not only will you not achieve immortality, but even the nine heavens will not tolerate you. Ching Lian and Yandan arrive at the Yaokai. He says to her, Yandan, you're here to gather celestial dew. Try to fill this bottle before sunset. Ying Yuan sees Yandan and calls out to her. She starts to walk away, but he flies up to intercept her, saying, The fragrance of lotus flowers can calm the mind and soothe your injuries. You should stay here for a while longer, there's no need to rush. She responds, Zixi's injuries are more severe than mine. She should be the one here, not me. Ying Yuan says, You belong to Yangsu Heavenly Palace, while Zixi does not. When I was at Dick Cliff, I also encountered blooming lotus flowers. However, at that time, I was blind, and I could only smell the fragrance. That aroma was worth a hundred times more than what I perceive now. Yandan says, although the lotus flowers in the heavenly court are beautiful, they always seem to carry a chill. I wonder if the lotus flowers in the mortal realm are warm and comforting. Ying Yuan responds, Zixi has already received grace from the emperor spared from the trials of mortal life. You don't need to go down to the mortal realm for her. Yandan is with Luming, and she's a bit drunk. She says to him, Luming, I feel so troubled. I want to forget about him, but I just can't. What should I do? Today at the Yaokai, I saw him. He kept talking about Dick Cliff. Why? Luming, I'm in so much pain, it's unbearable, worse than being struck by lightning. Luming says, then I'll go get some forgetfulness water. Do you want to drink it? She shakes her head and says, I don't want to drink it. She picks up the hairpin that Ying Yuan gave her and continues, more than forgetting the pain, I don't want to forget him. The time spent at Dick Cliff was too beautiful, too cherished. Luming, unable to bear seeing her in pain, says, don't torment yourself like this. You can indulge yourself once more, follow your heart's desire and have another dream. She responds, have another dream. Yandan arrives outside Ying Yuan's sleeping quarters. Using a transformation technique, she changes herself into Zixi and sits by Ying Yuan's bedside. Tears stream down her face as she watches him. Zixi sees from a distance. Yandan reaches out as if to touch his face but withdraws her hand, restraining her desires. After Yandan leaves, Ying Yuan opens his eyes and thinks to himself, even if you take on Zixi's appearance, I still know it's you, Yandan. I'm sorry, but for your safety, 
I cannot acknowledge our relationship. In the Yuking Palace, Qiwan reports to the Emperor and Emperor Ying Yuan, saying, after investigation, it has been confirmed that Ying Deng, the steward, was indeed poisoned with the lotus toxin last night at midnight. The celestial physician has stated that while the four-leafed lotus can heal all things, when its roots are mixed with cinnabar, it becomes highly toxic. Ying Deng says, I have served in the heavenly court for a thousand years, and now I have been poisoned. Please, Emperor, make a decision on my behalf. The Emperor says, in the nine heavens, only Zixi and Yandan possess the body of the four-leafed lotus. I trust that Emperor Ying Yuan will administer justice impartially and restore your fairness. Ying Yuan says, Emperor, the Lotus Sisters are inherently kind-hearted. They would not intentionally harm others or violate heavenly laws. Ying Deng adds, they bear a grudge against me because I exposed Zixi for misusing celestial artifacts. It is because of Ying Yuan Emperor's protection that they dared to poison me. Yandan and Zixi are brought in and they bow to the Emperor and Emperor Ying Yuan. Ying Deng asks, May I inquire, where were you two celestial maidens last night at midnight? What were you doing? Yandan feels uneasy, as she was in Ying Yuan's room at that time. Zixi lies, saying, Emperor Ying Yuan has been having frequent nightmares lately. Last night, I was on duty in his room all night. Ying Deng says, Then it must have been Yandan who poisoned me. Yandan looks at Ying Deng in astonishment. Yandan says, I didn't poison you. Ying Deng asks her, then where were you last night at midnight? Zixi starts to panic. The emperor says, Yandan, last night the celestial guards saw you leaving the palace at midnight. Besides you, there was no one else. Ying Yuan, she belongs to your Yangsu heavenly palace, so it's up to you to determine the punishment according to your laws. However, this person is treacherous and cannot remain in Yangsu Heavenly Palace. Yandan asks Ying Yuan, Emperor, do you not believe me either? Ying Yuan says, for poisoning a celestial official, you shall receive the punishment of celestial fire. Take Yandan to the Heavenly Prison, and three days later, I will personally send her to the celestial punishment platform. Yandan looks at him, and he adds, in the years to come, may you maintain your integrity and purity, untouched by worldly distractions. Yandan is taken away.